Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that we can be here today. And uh, thank you for the children who come and sit at the front. Yay! You adults should be sitting at the front. <laughs> but um, it's good that we're here. Uh, and I give God, God thanks this morning <clears throat> for this day that he has made and the word that he has for us this morning. Are you ready for God's word this morning? Yay! Yeah? Good, good. We should always be ready to hear God's word. For we are his people. We are his people. And we need him and we need his power to act according to his word. Okay, the power of God. Have you experienced the power of God? Have you experienced the power of God in your lives? We should all be going, woo! Yes! <laughs> Isn't that what God wants? He wants that instant reaction from us. Um, when he's filling us, when he's so close, you know how we have to draw near to God so that he can draw near to us. Unless we have that thinking, that understanding that this is what God wants, we'll be in the dark. God doesn't want us to live in the dark, does he? He wants us to live in the light. And be the light. Our main passage today is from Matthew 5, 13 to 16. If you want to get it on your Bibles or your phones or your tablets, then please do. Otherwise, you can listen to me. It's a short passage. Um, I'm reading from the NIV. And here we go. Are you ready? Yes? Salt and light is the section is headed, salt and light. And verse 13 says this, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under the, underfoot. And verse 14 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Famous, well-known passage, isn't it? You've heard it many times. <clears throat> They've been still trying to work out uh, what it all means and how we can apply it to our lives. That's what we have to do with the Bible, isn't it? We have to work out what it means, hear from God, and do it. James says, you know, don't you be here as a word, but do it. Apply it to our lives, yeah? But apply what God says to our lives, whether we're young or whether we're old, I'm not going to point to anybody in particular, point to myself actually. <laughs> I go point to myself when I say old. And that's the way it is. That's the way God wants it to be. He's the Lord of our lives, all of our lives, from the very early years to the dying years. God wants to be Lord of our lives. <clears throat> now this passage we're looking at today uh, comes in the Sermon of the Mount, passages, chapters 5 to 7. And uh, it comes after the very famous, another famous set of instructions, blessed, or the Beatitudes, sorry, blessed are the poor in spirit, etc., etc. You could name them all, I'm sure. But we were not talking about those today. But... To put things into context, it comes after that. Okay? Sometimes when we read the Bible, we don't just pick one sentence. We have to look at where it comes from, um, look at what happened before, maybe what happens afterwards, and then we can actually think, hmm, yeah, that's what God's saying. You know, not just go off on a tangent and do what we think he's saying. Yeah? You ever done that? Just gone and done something without thinking about it? And got it all wrong? 
Yeah, you've done that? I'm sure you have. Because that's what we do. We can be impulsive sometimes and we just dash off and uh, go and do things that we don't think it through properly. God wants us to understand what he's about and what he wants us to do and learn from today's passage. So are you ready to learn today? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Mm. Okay, and Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount, primarily speaking to his disciples, okay, followers of Jesus. Anybody here a follower of Jesus today? Yeah? yeah? Woo! Praise God. That's the sort of response God wants, isn't it, from people? Followers of Jesus. Great that the kids have put their hands up. You've got your whole life to work out what that means and where it's going to take you. And what's going to happen? It's going to be exciting. It's going to be really exciting. But don't forget, you've got to stick at it. You know? No falling away. No changing priorities. You've got to stick at it. And this passage, you've got to stick at it. You know, it's not going to be hunky-dory all the way. But God is with us. So that makes up for anything, anything that comes and, and seems like bad. Okay, because remember, <clears throat> in the Beatitudes, you've got the people that are in trouble, or they need, they need mercy, and all the things that can press in on us and make us think, wow, uh, does God really love me? But God's promises are in those words in the first few sections of Matthew 5. So let's make sure we understand and look at those bits before we press in onto what this bit says. That's the way God wants it to be. And if you're not a follower of Jesus today, if you're not, God is calling you to follow him from today. Okay? That's the message we always want to put out, you know? When you meet people, if you're a follower of Jesus, that should be the, your calling card, you know? Make sure they know you're a follower of Jesus and challenge them about whether they follow Jesus, you know. It's easy sometimes in church here to put our hands up and say, yeah, I'm a, I follow Jesus. And then when we get outside, hmm, a bit more difficult, isn't it, sometimes? Your friends are not particularly nice, so you sort of join in with them, and it doesn't really look Jesus-y to me. It doesn't look jesus to other people. It doesn't look Jesus-y. That's a tricky word, isn't it? Jesus-y. Yeah? You want to be jesus -y? I do. Well, if you want to follow Jesus today, then do see us at the end because it's important. Because the rest of the, what we say and what, the, what God has to say, you've got a shield up stopping it getting in if you're not a follower because the enemy's there and he's blocking everything that God wants to do in your life if you don't follow if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. And salt is mentioned in our passage today. Now salt, who knows what salt is? What is it? For food. You know what? That's probably the most... Uh, the commonest answer that people would give, isn't it? Putting it on our food. Putting it on our food. And there are other uses for salt, but salt, I mean, most of the food you buy has got salt in it, hasn't it? And you put some more on it, and uh, you want more, you want more. The world needs salt, doesn't it? The world needs, the world needs God's salt, and it needs more, and it needs more, and it needs more. And God is able to well, it tells us that we're the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. So that's something that we can think of. Mm, God wants me to be salt. And salt, you're quite right, Micah, uh, flavors food, doesn't it? We add it to our food. Who, who likes lots of salt on their food? Who's been told by the doctor, you're eating too much salt? <laughs> you're eating too much salt sometimes, they say, don't they? Well, it can easily happen because we've got so much of it in our diets and 
and we pour a bit more on on the table and we like it and if people haven't put salt in we go ooh that would taste very nice but we need to sometimes be a little careful not with God's salt but with the salt that you use on your salt cellar on the table and uh, <clears throat> salt was also used for preserving things you know there was a time when we didn't have fridges can you imagine life without a fridge there are some people have had uh, earlier in their lives maybe they didn't have a fridge but, or tin cans tin cans are another way of people preserving food aren't they tin cans and um, so oh, we still have things like salt fish don't we that's sort of preserved in salt isn't it so we still have it and you can get preserved things in salt but not much or as uh, much as it was in those days and disinfecting things with salt used to treat skin diseases and bleeding you know rubbing salt into cuts and things these things but sort of used to the story we used to hear was like the um, chimney sweeps the chimney sweep boys and girls not much maybe not even as old as some of you would have to go up the chimneys and sweep the chimneys out and they used to get all cuts and bruises and they used to put salt into the wounds to toughen them up because it make them extra thick skin horrible horrible thing to do isn't it but they used to have to do it praise god we don't have uh, children sweeping chimneys today and uh, another used for salt in the in the bible temple offerings the jewish people used to salt meat and grain uh, you can read about that in leviticus and also uh, currency currency salt was so valuable um, Mali salt was so valuable that you used to get paid in it instead of pocket money would you like a spoonful of salt no would you no <laughs> crazy isn't it so valuable salt was so valuable and um, so it used to be used as a method of payment or oh, they'd exchange things for salt and um, um, in fact, salt, the word salt in uh, Latin, salarium, I think it is. But it's actually where we get the word salary from. You know, when you get paid your job money, your salary, that's where the word comes from. Salt, because they used to use salt as a, a, a way of paying things. So it was quite important. See, Jesus uses things that people can associate with, doesn't he? Salt, you know. Other things like in the Bible. What other things were in the Bible? Oh, putting mud on people's eyes. That must have been fun. <laughs> yeah? And he used to talk about sowing seed. Lots of farmers. And we've done a lot of the parables, haven't we? In our group. Parables of the kingdom. And Jesus used things that people could relate to and understand and get the message that he wanted to say. And our message today is about salt and light. <clears throat> so the salt and light. Sometimes people use the phrase, don't they? He's the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. What do they mean by that? Well, they mean maybe good, honest, humble, um, but that's not quite the thrust of what Jesus is saying. Um, because it's followed, also followed by a warning, isn't it? Not to you lose your saltiness. If we're not in line with the purposes of God and what God wants us to do, then we're not being salt, are we? We're not being salt if we're not in line with what God wants. So our salt makes the food taste better and adds flavour. Otherwise, something can be quite bland, you know. Who'd have chips without salt on? Mm. Anybody have chips without salt? <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> May you be filled. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And other things like salted caramel ice cream. Have you had that? Salted caramel ice cream. Ooh. Salted caramel ice cream, yeah? Ah. Now, I've got a little uh, task here for one or two people to do. Maybe we need an adult to come and supervise what's going on. Uh, when you come to the table and take the water bowl on the table, some of the children can come up and do this. Come and do it. We well, can take the water bottle, take some salt. We've got salt in the can. Show everybody the, the water. Lift it up so the camera can see, maybe. And that's the salt, a water bottle with some water in it. And then we've got some salt in a little... Hold it up high so people can see it. Yeah, and just take a cup, a spoonful of salt and put it in there. Turn the people, that's it. Well done. Okay. And just what I'll do for now, just bring it down and make sure that all the salt's gone in. If any, make sure it's all gone in. Has it all gone in? Okay. Close the lid and shake it up. Make sure you close the lid up. It's... It just okay. You can shake it up. Oh, you haven't tightened it up properly. <laughs> That's it. Give it a shake. <clears throat> okay. Where's the salt gone? Is it there? It's gone. Oh. The salt's gone. Where's it gone? Anybody know where it's gone? Into heaven. <laughs> if, it, if it was that easy, you could just have a salt, a salt water bath. <laughs> it's gone into the water, okay? Salt dissolves in water, what we call dissolving. Salt dissolves in water. And... Um, you can keep putting the salt in eventually. No more salt will dissolve, okay? But you see what Jesus was saying is, you know, when we go into the world, if we're not careful, we can just dissolve into the world and people don't know that we're actually there, you know? But actually, if you put enough salt in there, the salt won't dissolve anymore. And that's the sort of salt we've got to be. We've got to keep, God, God will keep refreshing us with more salt, more salt, God, more, more of you, God, I pray, so that I can keep influencing them in the world and eventually, you know, people will start to see that, ah, there's more to rich than uh, just dissolving into things. So I, I'm actually the salt that God wants me to be. When people can see that, you know, sometimes we think we're just dissolving into the world and, we, and nobody can see us. But God wants us to be salt that is there for everybody to see. Okay, thank you very much. Give me a clap. <laughs> Afterwards, you can put some more in and see how much it takes to fill it to, so the salt doesn't dissolve. In Colossians 4, verse 6, Paul says this. He tells us to ensure that our speech is seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. That's the kind of thing Jesus has in mind when he's talking about salt. Salt that <clears throat> has that effect that he wants. So we may know how to answer people's questions. If we're going to advance in the kingdom, we have to know how to answer people's questions, don't we? Because some people don't know about God, and um, they have questions. And we can do a bit of learning on how to answer people's questions. People's questions. That's a way that we can advance the kingdom in our world. By being ready to answer what people have, have got questions. That, even questions that we may have had, 
once upon a time. But now somebody told us the answer. We can tell other people. And it's all in God's word. The answers we find in God's word. Now, nobody knows everything, do they? Do you know everything? Do you know everything? You do? No, you don't, no. You wouldn't need to go to school, would we, if we knew everything? And um, only God the Father knows everything. Jesus said even he didn't know the day that he was going to return. You know, Jesus is coming back again. Yeah, he's coming back again to be the judge. Well, remember how we did uh, sheep and goats? He wanted to be a sheep. Who wanted to be a sheep? Everybody wanted to be a sheep when we did sheep and goats. Yeah, of course they did. We've got a banner out there. We might put it up later about sheep and goats. And um, we need to be the salt. Agents for God. Want to be a, an agent for God? Not so much a secret agent, but a very visible agent. Yeah? When you think of agents, you think of, oh, secret agents. Do you think about secret agents? Micah? Secret agents, spies. Well, we're not spies. We're not spies for God. We're agents for God in the sense of being that salt that he wants us to be. And we can, everybody, this applies to everybody here, not just the children, yeah? We can all be agents for God. And if we're agents for God, then we're going to be advancing, advancing in the kingdom, the kingdom in your world. Realizing that you're God's special agent, God's purpose, person. You know, that person that you speak to might be the only person that ever that they speak to about Jesus. Might be. That's why it's so important for us to take opportunities that come and take them and use, use them fully. We are, we are all we're called to be disciples of Jesus, remember. And this um, going out and being a salt is quite hard. It's easy just not to be the person that God wants us to be, isn't it? It's easy to be somebody else that God doesn't want us to be. But we've got to be the person that God wants us to be. And um, then we'll be the salt. You know, sometimes we give up too easily, and then we say, well, it's not working. I'm not even going to try next time. But God wants us to try and try and try again. Sometimes things don't happen unless we pray and pray and pray again. Yeah? Sometimes things don't happen. You know, Auntie Margaret had a sore knee. We've been praying this week. It's still not healed. We're going to pray again. You know, I've got a story when I was healed. My knee, my knee got healed just in like an instant, you know. I had a, a sore knee, and I was walking between the buildings at school, and I said, God, I want, I want healing. I want healing. Claim my healing from God. And God touched me. And then I went back into the building and I was dancing. I was dancing. And the teacher said, one of the teachers was there and said, oh, it's okay, Rich is dancing again. I thought, again? <laughs> we got a reputation for being a bit of a singer and dancer at work. And uh, praising God, of course. Um, but that's the sort of salt that we have to be. We've got to be like that. When you're at school, okay, I know there'll be times when you have to be quiet, but I'm sure there are times when you can make a noise for God. And same at work, I'm sure there are times when you can, you know, make a noise for God. Advance, advance the kingdom. Taking every opportunity, how little it is, you know, people see it. And they might ask you something which you can give that answer to. 
that you've learnt from God's word. So, we've all got to be salt. Jesus says we are the salt of the earth. Followers of Jesus are like salt. <clears throat> Although we're ordering everywhere, we get involved in lots of things. And we hope that people notice. Sometimes they don't. Even when the salt's there, they don't always notice. But we have many roles to play in God's kingdom so that it can come on earth. You know, we're working together so that the end will come and Jesus will come again. The fullness of God's kingdom. That's what we want. So we're going to move on to looking at verses 14 and 16. Light. Isn't it amazing that Jesus said he was the light of the world? Light is a strange thing, isn't it? Very mysterious. We think we know all about it, but we don't. We, don't, we can't even decide whether it's a particle or a wave. If you're a scientist, it's both. How can it be both? Jesus said he's the light of the world. The light of the world. So he's everything. He's everything. Jesus is everything. He's Lord, Savior, Healer. Lots of names you can give him. Many names. He's, he's, he's everything you could ever need. Everything you could ever need, Jesus is. That's why we tell people about him. Because he's the solution to everything that you need. In the I Ams, in John's Gospel, Jesus said the words, I am the light of the world. And here, in the Sermon on the Mount, he says the same of us. He's saying the same of us. Let me just say it again. You are the light of the world. Isn't that an amazing statement to come from Jesus? Jesus, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then he said, so are you. If you're my disciple, you're the light of the world. And when we are like Jesus, this is what he's saying, we are like him, advancing the kingdom will be part of our world, won't it? Part of our world. Now, the lights, <coughs> sorry, the lights from a city can be seen from miles away. And um, not just on the earth, but from the sky. Have you ever been in a plane, looked out the window when you're coming into a city? Look at those lights shining brightly. If we live for Christ, then our light must be visible, not hidden. Okay? Time for another little practical. And now, I need a volunteer. I've got a light here. But remember, I'm going to put it on. Here it is. So that, that's like me, okay, hopefully. My light is shining. Um, I need one person to come and help me. Can you come and come? Oh, maybe you can do it down there. Yeah, yeah. Can you? I'll get that green... Um, There's two there, just get one of them. Yep, okay. Okay, you can open it up. Okay, now imagine you're, you're the light, okay? You're a light for God. Okay? So now I want you to put it on your head. Okay, can you put it over your head? When we have them out in the hole, they, they're into them. They're, they're wearing them straight off, no problem. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Can you see him now? No, 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 you can't see him. Why can't you see him? Why can't you see him? But he put on the bag, yeah, he put on the cover, covered his lot. he covered himself up. Shall we take the bag? Are you okay in there? <laughs> yeah. Let's take it off. We don't want to scare you. You're not frightened in there? No? Well done. Give him a clap. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, I can put it over this one. Here we go. Jesus is saying that, you know, don't put a bowl over your lamp. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I won't leave it on too long in case it gets too hot. This lamp's no good with the bag on top, is it? With the, or Jesus, Jesus talks about a bowl. Yeah? No good to anybody. But, yeah, we've got to be those people that shine. Thank you. If we live for Jesus, live for Christ, our light must be visible, not hidden. Make sure we're not covering up when we should be shining. Yeah? A kingdom will be advancing if we're shining for God. We might not think it. We might not think we're having an effect. But many people look at us and you and make a judgment on what's going on. Make sure they can make that judgment that says, ah, I see a light shining. Maybe I'll go and find out what it is. Maybe I'll go and find out what that light is. So keep your light shining by living out your faith. And their faith is all about the kingdom, bringing God's kingdom in. Remember in the Lord's Prayer? Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven. That's right. So we want to, you know, it's quite, God is so consistent through his word, isn't he? Consistent through his word. He wants us to be shining, wants us to be bringing in the kingdom, wants us to be advancing in the kingdom. God doesn't want anybody to stay where they are when he's moving. Yeah? He wants you to move with him and advance in the kingdom, in your world. Advance the kingdom in your world. Whether it's at school, who's at school here, or college? School? You at school? Yeah? When you're at school, God wants you to advance. That means go forward, yeah? Go forward with God. Yeah? So don't forget, don't just think about God when you come on Sundays or Kingdom Light on Friday. Kingdom Light. <laughs> Good name, isn't it? I like it. Kingdom Light. Just what it should be. Now, we've uh, got to think about the shining light a little bit more. You've got to speak up and be bold, okay? Speak up and be bold, okay? So I want you to everybody to shout, I love Jesus, okay? Can you say that after three? Nice and loud, are you ready? One, two, three. I, I love, love Jesus. Jesus, okay? Now, that's what you've got to say next time you meet somebody, one of your friends, yeah, can you shout that that loud? Can you shout it that loud? When you meet somebody? You might meet somebody this afternoon at the barbecue that you've never met before. Say, shout to them. After three, one, two, three. I love Jesus. Amen. We've got to be those, that sort of people that were Jesus. Always right in the top of our thoughts and our understandings. And we need to... Speak up for him. Seek out from the crowd. Don't go along with the flow, okay? It's easy to go along with the flow, isn't it? When everybody's doing stuff that shouldn't be going on, it's like that salt. You just blend in and you don't really... Nobody notices. We've got to be people that stand out. Stand out for God. And... Uh, Proclaim your hope. Proclaim. You've got something super to shout about, to proclaim. I love Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my best friend. Jesus helps me every day. I pray to Jesus. All these things that we can say. Very, very proudly, I say. Speak about God to your friends and to your neighbours. 
be that beacon of truth and shine for him. The world is in decay and full of darkness. But Jesus are salt and light. Salt and light. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as Saviour now, then this is the time to make that choice. And don't sit on the fence. So you're either for him or against him. There's no sort of in between. People can say, well, I've made my mind up yet. I've made my mind up. By not making your mind up, you've made your mind up. You've made your mind up. We always give people a chance to say yes to Jesus. So you're either in the light or you're in the dark. Or you are the light or you are the dark. Matthew 5, 13 to 16, Jesus tells us that the world is like a, a meal that needs salt or a dark room that needs light. He's saying we can be that salt and light following him. It's more than just being a positive person or a negative person. It's about being a force for good and making a difference. A force for good and making a difference. And even if things don't change, you know you're doing the right thing. God wants us to do the right thing. Call righteousness. Do the right thing. Challenge what's going on around us. The Bible talks us about truth, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Philippians 4 verse 8. And God wants us to seek out his kingdom and his righteousness. And then he says, everything else will be given to you. Everything you need, not necessarily everything you want, but everything you need will be given to you. Well, he doesn't ask us to do it on our own, okay? What does God give us? Anybody know what God gives us? What does God give us? Can anybody know? Does anybody know? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And he gives it us in abundance. In fact, you can ask for as much of the Holy Spirit as you want. Because God is inexhaustible. Inexhaustible in that sense of his Spirit. So you can never ask for too much. In fact, we all should ask for a bit more, shouldn't we? We should all be asking for a little bit more. And um, more, and not just for yourself, but ask it some for other people as well. God says that we will receive the power from the Holy, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, in you. And we, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's the Great Commission, what God's really wanting us to do to be advancing the kingdom all over the world, all over the earth. We can be salt and light following Jesus. Called to shine from the inside out. It's a great song, isn't it? Shine from the inside out. <clears throat> and show God's goodness to the world. By living out his teachings, we can change how people see things like race, business, family, all the things that are quite topical these days. God says there's no Jew or Greek. Everybody's part of the, Everybody can be part of the family. There's no black or white or anything like that. We're one family. This is the message that the world so badly needs, isn't it? Well, we need to let Jesus in and shine in us so we can shine out to other people. We thank God that he is able to do that because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And he's made it possible. And we always sing about it and we talk about it and we have to go and do it. So don't forget to 
Live your lives like Jesus is going to be coming back tomorrow. That's what they say, don't they? Live your life like Jesus is coming back tomorrow. Then you'll be right at the forefront of pressing on and bringing in and advancing the kingdom in the world that you live in, whether it's your workplace, your school, your family home, even here at church, we need a bit more, don't we? We need a bit more of that kingdom. We need more of it. So let's, let's pray that we can all do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Let's pray. Oh, don't forget, if you do want to start this journey of following Jesus, now is the time. God is always willing to um, receive people into the kingdom. Yeah, amen. Father God, we thank you that um, you laid challenges down for our lives and uh, salt and light. Let's remember to be salt and light in the days ahead and uh, pray for each and every one. Pray for the person next to you that they'll be salt and light. We pray for each other. Pray that you'll be salt and light that God will work mightily in their lives. And when we come together, we can have the testimony of God at work. God at work in our lives, bringing in the kingdom, advancing the kingdom, so that we can give thanks with a grateful heart that God would even consider to use us, the people that we are. Change us to be more like Jesus, we pray. And do it for your, uh, your name's sake, Lord God, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.